The Carbon series is where budget and high range motherboard line starts to blur or to merge. And it's also MSI's best selling motherboard. So yeah, it's a serious motherboard to review and it's B550 variant is particularly interesting since it places it as a premium board at a more affordable price range, anywhere around $220. And let's be clear, MSI has done very, very well here, making this motherboard an absolute performance monster, solidly engineered with one thing and one thing only in mind, gaming, gaming, gaming. Today we are reviewing the excellent MSI MPG B550 Gaming Carbon Wi-Fi, a deliciously focused motherboard which gets it right at almost every stage. And fun fact for you, I just found out that a teacup is not only made for tea. And that is not tea in there, no monsieur. The MSI's MPG series can be treacherous. It can either be a very, very good motherboard or a very bad one. And I reassure you, this is one of the best I have reviewed so far. It makes a huge leap forward when compared to its B450 version. And obviously the big change here is the introduction of the PCIe 4.0 standard, which doubles available bandwidth from PCIe 3 to PCIe 4. And it goes head to head uh, against some of the best motherboard on the market. So definitely one of those boards a manufacturer cannot get wrong. Now, starting with the obvious. We are dealing with a six PCB layered ATX motherboard and right here, right there, this is one of those fundamentals that engineering wise, uh, manufacturers really have to watch for when going for a PCIe 4.0 motherboard. Having six PCB layers guarantees a good PCIe 4.0 support as well as a cooler VRM and even a better audio uh, quality since the motherboard isolation is much, much higher than its uh, four PCB layer uh, counterparts. It is powered by an AM4 CPU socket supporting both third and fifth generation of Ryzen CPU. In other words, PCIe 4.0 Zen 2 architecture only processors, which has all its importance since the PCIe 4.0 enabled component of this motherboard will be sourced only from its processors. And Zen 2 architecture only also mean that this motherboard will not be supporting uh, integrated APU from the 3000 series AMD processor, meaning 3200G, 3400G uh, processors are at by the window, but we do have an incoming fifth generation uh, APU coming in, which promises so much and undoubtedly will be supported by this motherboard. VRM wise, well, that is where the carbon really, really, really shines. We have 1460 amps direct phases with doublers, 12 of which are CPU centric. At 1.2 volt, that's about 860 watt of raw power to run and overclock the most demanding processors. Obviously having 60 amps power stages it's great, but it's also very, very hot. It has uh, a, um, a very strong heat footprint. And to control all that heat, MSI came up with the same solution they used on their much more expensive X570 Unify board, an innovation I absolutely adored and absolutely thrilled to see here, meaning a massive single heat shield cover. From power stages to back IO, there is nothing here but condensed aluminum. Additionally, both of our heat shields have a double thermopadded contact design to provide individual heat dissipation for both our chokes and power stages. Now, both of these features coupled with a six PCB layer gives us one of the coolest uh, VRM most efficient VRM of its class, showing an ice cool 40 to 50 degrees Celsius at a 100% synthetic load on an overclocked 3900X. So talking of fundamentals here, MSI has done an amazing job with the carbon. This is definitely an overclocker and a CPU screamer, a huge uh, engineering kudos to MSI for this. Memory wise, the MPG B550 Tomahawk supports up to 128 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM in a dual channel configuration, clocking up to an unprecedented 5.1 gigahertz. But not that those kind of speeds are only uh, uh, possible on single uh, memory sticks. If you're gonna go for two, third and four, the clock will incrementally decrease going all the way down to 3.6 gigahertz with four 
dim stick. So if you want to go for those kind of speeds, you're gonna have to go for higher density RAM sticks such as 16 and 32 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM. Now, taking a closer look to our B550 chipset. Since our CPU takes care of all the PCIe 4.0 needs to feed our most performant components, the chipset can comfortably remain PCIe 3.0 without slowing down our build. It also means that our chipset is much cooler 6 watt instead of 11 on an old PCIe 4.0 X570 chipset. So no more need of an active cooling solution as seen on its X570 counterpart. So as a result, we have all the benefits of a PCIe 4.0 enabled motherboard uh, without its cumbersomeness. Uh, we don't have the, the noise of an extra fan, we don't have the cost of an extra fan, we don't have the moving part of an extra fan. Definitely a very balanced approach allowed by the B550 chipset. Staying in the memory, we have two M.2 solid state drive sticks, which can swap data up to 32 gigabit per second. But since our CPU fed M.2 solid state drive supports PCIe 4.0 standard, it can run up to a whopping 64 gigabit per second, which obviously is great for a boot drive. In both cases, M.2 solid state drive sticks can get really, really hot very quickly. Fortunately, we have this beautiful, and I really want to underline, beautiful, long and thick heat sinks, which obviously will do their job to keep our sticks from the ugly spaghetti thermo monster. Staying in the storage, worth mentioning the presence of our usual somewhat obsolete but reliable 6 SATA 3.0 plugs, which will swap data up to bottlenecking 6 gigabit per second each. Obviously, I'm not a fan of it. I'm impatiently waiting for an upgrade on those for the past 10 years, but it's there, it's reliable. It's fine. Export-wise, we have five PCIe exports, three bachelors, and two 16 slots with different speeds. As usual, only the closest one to your CPU can run up to 16 PCIe 4.0 lanes. Therefore, this is where you'd want your video card installed for optimal performances, hence the metallic reinforcement. Our second 16 slot is capped at only four PCIe 3.0 lane, so not really suitable for a GPU intensive task, but at that price range with a B550 chipset, I did not expect anything less. But worth noting, it's not because you're gonna have PCIe 4.0 enabled 16 PCIe slots uh, that you're gonna be able to experience better video gaming or faster uh, rendering performances, simply because even with the latest 30 series from Nvidia or 6000 series from AMD video cards, uh, they, they still do not produce enough bandwidth to go beyond PCI 3.0 levels, but it's a great future-proofing feature at the very least. Back IO-wise, first let me note the presence of a padded back IO plate, which is rather a premium and welcome feature. Now, starting from the left, we have two integrated display outputs. You know, th there's a couple of things I want to say here. First, this motherboard was designed uh, for higher tier processors and even overclockers. And, and the very first thing will burn on your motherboard when you're trying to severely overclock a processor are your display outputs. So um, I would definitely double guess MSI on this one. I'd rather not see display outputs on such a motherboard and give us more uh, space on budget a bit cheaper and also space on overclocking altogether. Next, we have a PS2 connector, which I, I could understand on a, a, an overclocker such as the Carbon, since this is really the most robust feature we can have the, and the, the safest way to access your BIOS. But again, because we have display outputs or integrated display outputs, it, it just, it doesn't really completely make sense. So MSI next time, you can keep the PS2 on an overclocker, but make sure to remove again those display outputs which are eating in our budget. Next, we have our CPU flashback button for CPU-less BIOS recovery and update. Four USB second generation, two USB third generation, two 10 gigabit USB plugs, including a Type-C, a 2.5 gigabit LAN, which is what I expected from this price range, since uh, this has been a natural upgrade ever since the Intel Z490 platform motherboards and the B550 release. Uh, it's also a sizable upgrade, a big jump forward when compared to its B450 uh, version, its predecessor. Now we have an excellent AX200 Wi-Fi 6 dual band module with speeds going up to 2.4 gigabit per second, which again is a sizable upgrade compared to its predecessors and, and, and a, a long awaited one. And finally, and thankfully, we got our 8 channel ALC 1220A audio codec, which is about the very best uh, audio integrated codec you can have on a motherboard. And it also takes full benefit from our numerous PCB layering, having both left and right audio channel traced on individual PCB layer for a better sound insulation. Definitely one of the best 
integrated audio experience you can wish from an integrated audio codec, especially if you're living in a non-grounded house such as Hi. It will give you pure bass in gaming and very clear and clean uh, audio signal when recording. So overall, a great looking IO, lots of uh, peripherals, very good Wi-Fi and audio and all that. But I would love to see those integrated graphics output out of this motherboard, saving us 10 or $15 in the process. And frankly talking, this is not something I'd expect people to use on such a motherboard. Moving on to our front panel connectors, we have two second generation plugs, great for monitoring, a five gigabit third generation plug and a 10 gigabit type C front panel connector, which is what I expected and is a must at a $200 plus motherboard. Cooling wise, we have eight PWM fans, including a single dedicated water pump. And obviously this is more than enough to allow you a solid airflow in your build, but, as usual, I will regret the fact that we do not have hybrid fan connectors which would uh, be able to support equally on all of them, either a PWM fan, a water pump, or a flow sensor. And it would have also given us a little bit more of enthusiastic agility around the board. So yeah, definitely something MSI wants to work on on the next iteration of this board. Troubleshooting wise, we got our easy debugger to guide us through the booting process, which is a bare minimum on a PCI 4.0 enabled motherboard. We also have this flash bias button that we've seen on the back, so nothing fancy here we do have the necessary to troubleshoot us out of trouble. And finally, this would not be a gaming motherboard without the RGB madness, which makes our life so much more worthy of living, especially in 2020. Starting with the RGB strip hidden under our chipset heat shield, a rather good looking RGB strip hidden under our old metallic IO roof, and three RGB connectors scattered all over our board, including two addressable ones. In short, enough light to brighten the stoic, darkness of your obscured poetic heart. In conclusion, at $220, the MSI MPGB 550 Gaming Carbon Wi-Fi is about $30 cheaper than its X570 counterpart and about 30 bucks premium from its predecessor. And let me be clear, despite the, the IO mishap with a display uh, integrated output, the B550 Carbon, to make it short, is an impeccably executed gaming motherboard. We got strong fundamentals with six layered PCB, a very powerful and heat efficient VRM and top of the industry cooling abilities. I'll make a special mention for the premium and well-designed cooling components populating our board. MSI continues to take uh, uh, lessons from its Unify series and it definitely shows both in the quality of the manufacture of the board and its temperatures. And I'm almost tempted to say that I needed this board. I needed to review this motherboard because MSI in the past few months have really dropped the ball on a couple of its products, especially on the MPG lineup. So a definitely big kudos to MSI engineering team to really raise the bar a little bit higher on this one. In short, the Carbon is a CPU handler and probably one of the best ones at that price range. And I almost risk myself saying surpassing all of its natural competition. Yes even the Pro from Gigabyte. Basically, if you are looking for the best CPU-centric gamer motherboard at that price range, well, there's really nowhere else your money wants to be. 